Morning guys, it's Mario from thewoodfather.com here. Today's video is just a little follow up on last week's box joint jig video which um, was received really really well. I got a lot of great feedback from it. Um, I think the plans for it have been downloaded from my site over 400 times now which for me is just huge, especially just inside one week. So I'm really happy how it's gone. I guess it fills a need for those who either don't have a dado stack or their blade doesn't accept one. Or also, I think over in Europe, in some countries as well, dado stacks are actually illegal, so this is a really good substitute for one of them. Uh, today isn't a project video, but I'm just going to show a little technique how I use this jig to make different sized fingers on the one, uh, on one workpiece, I guess. So up here, these are three quarter inch, and down here, these are half inch. And you can go and replace them and do smaller ones or wider ones as well, all on the same jig, very, very easily. Okay, so here's a standard template that's just got three quarter inch fingers all the way along. What I'm going to do is take out, what do I take out? I'll take out these ones and I'll replace them with half inch fingers. Um, one thing that was pointed out to me is you don't need to cut two heights of these uh, blocks. You can just cut one and then lie them on the side. So that's what I do now. Makes things a little bit easier. And also I've got to go and jam little bits of wooden here to make them all nice and tight. Um, somebody else pointed out that what you could do is put a knob on the outside with a bolt going through to it, connected to a block, and then you can turn that to tighten up the block. And that would be the smarter way of doing it, not like this. But that works too. Ordinarily, when you're using this jig to cut a box, to cut a box joint for a box or a drawer, whatever it may be, you would normally do all four sides at once and just offset two of them when you line them up, just like I showed in the first video. Have one there, and then offset the next two. Um, when you're cutting them with different widths, you have to cut them separately. So you'll cut either the sides or the front and back together. Um, in this case, because I'm just doing it as an example when I'm not making a proper box, I'm just doing a demonstration, I'm only going to use two pieces, so I'm only going to cut one at a time. And also you might notice that in the first video I used a metal ruler on the table saw to offset my workpiece from the top of the table so it doesn't drag. Instead of using the metal ruler, now I use a piece of MDF, simply because one day I might forget to move it. So, put that in like that. And that's it, we're all set to cut. Okay, so now we've got one side cut, so we're going to make the mating piece for it. To do that, we've got to reset our template, which is really easy to do. So I'll just take that one out, make it easier. Now all you've got to do is flip every piece. If it was low, make it high. If it was high, make it low. And that's it, that's done. Pretty simple, huh? One other important point to make, when you make your cut for the second side, after you've gone and rotated your template, you've in effect reset the template so you don't need to offset the first piece anymore. Push them all over. So if you're making joints with different size thicknesses, you never have to offset your piece. Moment of truth, straight in, how good is that? 6mm MDF is not the uh, material of choice obviously, but it does work anyway. The reason I made the jig in the first place is because I make these boxes. There are arcade boxes where I'm going to mount a joystick and a few buttons and then I'll hook it up to a computer so you can play old classic arcade games on them. Um, this one here, it doesn't look like much at the moment because there's no hardware in there, I'm waiting on it all to arrive. Hopefully in the next week or so the joystick and the buttons come. But the box went together, you know, within 10 minutes I had it all cut and put together and then I glued it in and it's come up beautifully. Everything's nice and smooth and flush and it just looks a lot nicer than the other ones I've made. Um, this one's going to be a dedicated Gallagher one. It's going to be wireless as well, which is pretty cool. So it's just going to have a joystick and the one button to play with. I'll, uh, I'll 
post some photos on Facebook when that's done. Lastly, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who watched the last video and then took the time to like, comment and even share it. And hello to all my new subscribers as well. Nice to have you on board. It's way too hot out here for me to do anything much, so I'm just going to head inside to where the air conditioning is. If you've got any questions or queries about the jig or anything else, just uh, leave a comment down below. If you want to like or share or any of that sort of stuff, go for it too. Um, that's pretty much it for today. I guess I'll see you next time. Catch.